All right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, Thor versus Eddie appears to have an official date now. So March 19th, 2022, which is just about a month away, about five weeks from now, which is interesting to me for a number of reasons. The first being, it says on the post that Thor put up that tickets and viewing information coming soon. So they don't even have the information on how much it's going to cost to attend this event where the live stream is going to be, how much the live stream is going to cost, or where to even go to watch the live stream. And this is going to be held in the Dubai Duty Free Tennis Stadium. So at five weeks out from the event, it seems a little bit surprising that there really hasn't been any major marketing at all. I mean, we haven't really seen Thor or Eddie or anybody else promoting this date. And I think the reason for that is because this is a very last minute decision. Now, what I had originally heard was that Thor versus Eddie was supposed to happen at the Arnold Classic. Now, I don't know exactly why that ended up not happening, but what I've heard is that Thor and Eddie have guaranteed in their contracts a pretty large amount of money for just showing up for the fight. So whatever this amount is, whether it's a million each, five million each, 10 million each, they're guaranteed a large sum regardless of who wins. Now, what I heard was they ran the numbers. I mean, they looked at kind of the interest in the fight. They looked at some of the numbers from Thor's last uh, streaming fights, those exhibition fights. And after running the numbers, it's, it's tough to, it's a tough sell. Let's say that Thor and Eddie are guaranteed a million dollars each, just hypothetically. That'd be a lot of pay-per-view sales just to pay Thor and Eddie. And then you got to pay the promoters. You got to pay the venue. You got to pay the video crew for the actual live stream itself. Um, you know, whatever else goes on to the logistics of if there's going to be an in-person crowd. I'm told the reason why this is such a last minute date and such a last minute change is that nobody really wants to put this on because it's not really going to be a lucrative event after Thor and Eddie are paid with that guarantee. And I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you guys, I'm sure are going to let me know in the comments because you guys have been letting me know pretty much every time I mention it, that the interest in this fight is no longer what it was like two years ago when Thor first challenged Eddie to this boxing match. You know, maybe back then a lot more people were interested before Eddie got injured, when the beef was fresh, when the deadlift record had just been broken, when the rivalry, you know, they had this back and forth. They were posting these YouTube videos about why they hate each other. Um, when that was all like really in the prime, I think people were interested, but it's been almost two years. So the interest in the rivalry itself seems to be waning a little bit. The guaranteed money for the fighters seems to be an issue. And you got to think about the third aspect of this. The fight itself is a tough sell. They're billing this and marketing this as the heaviest boxing match in history. But if you think about that, what does that really mean? This is probably not going to be a long fight. There's really one or two scenarios that are going to play out here. Someone's going to get knocked out immediately. And that's one option. Or two, these guys are going to get gassed out after a couple of rounds. And we're just going to see a very slow motion the rest of the fight. Being as big as these guys are, I would imagine that after round two or three, if nobody gets knocked out, the pace of this fight is going to slow down tremendously. And I think that's the other part of the fight that's hard to sell is because these guys are so big. I don't think anybody here is really expecting a technically entertaining match from a boxing technicality standpoint, from a boxing technique standpoint. I mean, in any case, I'm going to be buying the fight. I'll pay for it. I'll watch it. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys are going to be buying the fight, paying for it, watching it. If so, why? And if not, why? Let me know in the comment section down below, March 19th, Eddie versus Thor. And now a word from our sponsors over at the Arnold Sports Festival. I think that every bodybuilder has something unique, especially the bodybuilders today. I mean, wow, they are big. Now, next up in the news, I just talked to Charles Griffin, and Charles just posted a couple of physique updates here, and we have confirmation of what his next show is going to be. So in these physique updates, he says the picture on the left was taken this morning, and the picture on the right was taken at last Friday's check-in. So I asked him, what's the next show going to be? And he confirmed that he will be competing in the Indy Pro 
this coming May. So the last time we saw him on stage, I believe, was that Tampa Pro 2021 where he wound up in third place. That was the Tampa Pro that Ian Valier won. Phil Klahar was in a close second place. And Charles was right there in the mix, in the top three. He did really well in the first call, and I think he hung in there pretty well, even in the comparisons against Ian and Phil. I have a feeling that that Indy Pro is going to shape up to be a pretty good lineup. I think we're going to see some guys show up that we might not expect. I actually have a feeling, Blessing hasn't confirmed this, but Blessing Awodabu, we know that he's working with George Farah now, um, and it looks like he has started prepping for something. He's been posting more physique updates than he usually does. In fact, if you go back to his physique update on January 20th, he says that was day three of his diet. Um, and George Farah commented that and said the final pick is going to be epic. So it looks like he's probably starting his prep as of January 20th. And that would be a pretty appropriate distance out from the Indy Pro, which I think there's a good chance he does that show because that was his pro debut last year. That was the first show he did of the 2021 season and the first show that he did as a pro. So just don't be surprised if we see Blessing jump in that lineup as well. As we start to map out these shows that follow the Arnold Classic, I think there's going to be some good ones sprinkled in there kind of in the more immediate near future. Now, next up in the news, a physique update from Brandon Curry. And this is really the first physique update that Brandon has actually confirmed in the caption of that update that it's actually recent in terms of being from this Arnold Classic prep. He's posted a lot of throwback videos, um, a lot of throwback physique updates, and he always says that they're throwbacks. This was the first one that I think he's posted this entire prep that says it is from this prep, but he does say he won't specify when during the prep it's from. But I will say, the one thing that jumped out to me um, when I saw this update was Brandon's legs. I think people are always super quick um, to point out and criticize Brandon's legs. That has always been kind of the, I, I hate to say lacking point, but that really is what it has been. Um, but in this update, they look pretty big to me. Now, I don't know if it's the angle, because it is a super, I mean, to be fair, it's kind of a super weird angle. The, the cameraman or wherever the camera's at is at the bottom of the steps pointed up at Brandon, so it could just be the angle making his legs look bigger. But to me, in this video, Brandon's legs look significantly bigger. Granted, you know, there really hasn't been that much time between the 2021 Mr. Olympia and the 2022 Arnold Classic, just a span of a few months, really. So how, how much he can improve his legs from a size standpoint in that short of a time, probably not tremendously. But if you're trying to use this update to kind of gauge how Brandon is looking, that was one thing that jumped out to me. And really, at any point in his prep, he he looks pretty good in this video. Conditioning, it's kind of hard to tell because, again, we don't know exactly where it's from. So it really doesn't tell us that much. But looking at the physique overall, um, the legs are, are what my eyes are really drawn to. I think Brandon has always been the king of improvements, improving from show to show. Um, and maybe he did make some kind of drastic improvements from the Olympia to now. And maybe he is kind of going, you know a lot harder than usual because I would imagine he's tired of being runner up. I would imagine he wants his title back. He's been beaten by Rami twice now. So maybe this year he's doing something different, but as far as the Arnold classic is concerned, I've said this many times, but I think this is Brandon's show. I think Brandon's going to win on paper. He's the best bodybuilder in that lineup. He's the only Mr. Olympia in that lineup. Recently, he's the highest Olympia placing in that lineup. He's the, he's one of three Arnold Classic, former Arnold Classic champions in that lineup. Bonac and Cedric are also in there. On paper, he's just the best bodybuilder in that lineup. And I think his physique right now is the best physique in that lineup. I think he's going to be very tough to beat. And I think before, you know, especially with Nathan Diasha, some of these guys that dropped out made it a little bit interesting because like Nathan, he just won all these shows. He's beaten a lot of guys, but we haven't seen him on stage next to Brandon in a very long time. So that was one of those situations where you could have a guy come out of nowhere and beat Brandon because he hasn't gone up against Brandon recently. But most of these guys in this lineup, Brandon has beaten recently. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, the final physique update, Fabio Giga. This is the only other Brazilian bodybuilder in this Arnold Classic lineup. And he's the only other wild card that I feel like we really have no idea how he's going to do um, in, in, in a lineup like this, because realistically he got the invite to this Arnold classic because he won the last Arnold classic amateur. So that victory comes with an automatic boost into the next year's Arnold classic pro. So that means we've never seen him next to any of these guys. So these are the latest updates from Fabio Giga. And honestly, I think he looks pretty impressive, but again, he's a guy where we have no idea how he's going to look once he's on stage next to these seasoned pros because he is so new and we've never seen him in a lineup anything like this. He could stand out and hold his own and look phenomenal here, or he could get totally smoked, but I guess we'll find out in less than four weeks. 
So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. The likes help out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.